another another quick one. I If you are uh, training at home and uh, cannot afford ex expensive equipment, you can find an old duffel bag or a navy bag like this. You put some sand to keep it away and then shredded cloth up. Because shredded cloth has air in between them, then so they absorb force. Do not use all sand because it becomes compact and it can hurt your bones. What I have here is about uh, 30 to 20, 20 to 30 kilos of sand and rice husks. Rice husks are good because they have air in between them so they absorb force. Now, I use this primarily for finger extension. You know, if you know, do our pound training, you do like this dotting. Some say it can hurt your eyes because there are uh, acupuncture points here that could possibly harm your eyes. I didn't know, never seen one with a problem with that. But doing finger extension here is not so much for impact training but for power training, for strengthening the finger extensor muscles, the small, small muscles that extend the fingers. So what you do is stand beside the bag uh, some distance, assume an uh, unstable stance, not so strong stance, so that you sway around like this. Uh, I, I prefer a parallel stance. So from this distance, what you can do is swing the bag with the power of your fingers. Only as much as possible on your fingers, like this. And then you cut. Do not swing too hard because it will come back too hard and it will not be good for your training. Just start moderately with a, a small amount of force. So, you catch the bag, ideally you should catch the bag with the, with the fingers, you know, like this, you bend. Or you can, uh, to support your fingers, this, this, this fingers you support with your thumb, like this. You stop it like this. It strengthens the thumb for attacks. No, to, throw to the eyes. So, stand, parallel stance, uh, bend your knees a little lower. You target the center gra of gravity at the back. Again. Just like that. You give in. You give in with your elbows. The purpose of this training is not only to strengthen your finger extensor muscles, but also uh, so that you get used to striking, you know, jabbing, without bending this way, if it's too hard, you bend like this. If it's too hard, you bend naturally. If, if you can do it, you know, ultimately you can be, uh, you know, you can be absorbing force, if you're already strong. But while you're training, you do this slightly. So how do you progress? You increase the weight. You increase the weight and you increase the force of finger extension. Do not, do not use the push of your muscle or your body to push the back back. Just use the finger flicks. You can do this every day. Not very heavy exercise. Also, the bag is useful for training uh, what I call the twisting chop. You know, if there are certain forms of chops or strikes that do like this, twist like this. If you target you know, the, this muscle in the neck here, two thirds of that, if you hit the nerve inside there, it will paralyze the arm here. And here, paralyze the arm here. So your opponent will be useless. So what we do, we use the hands like this and strike the bag like this. You can assume the forward or the front stance to have more power, uh, more stable stance. Here, see? Okay. This can also be used for uh, 
training the uh, uh, soon characters uh, pants or the vertical fist pants. See, bones here and then here. That is the vertical pants. And the four fist pants, bones here, a line here. Okay? So to train the uh, vertical fist, you assume uh, the same parallel stance. Uh, don't involve so much power with your body, just your hands, your arms. Okay? You cut the bag as it comes back like this. And then you push it back with the power of the, 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 the twisting up power of your fist. Do not use power from the hips, just from the arm, not the body. So it's good because when you are uh, startled, you don't have time to be focusing, you know. The correct pants should be like this. That is the four-piece punch in karate. This is aligned. It's a little, not too much. A little bit. Because it fits into the, you know, here. Uh, the sternum. It fits into the sternum. And do not lock your uh, elbows. It could be attacked by direct defense. It could be broken. Just like this. Seems only innocent, but the attempt is to break your arm. So it's a little uh, bent by the elbow, so you have power. Okay? Do not raise your body. It depends on how you uh, how you do it, but uh, I mean how you position your body. But basically, that's the four piece pants. This is the vertical pants. Vertical pants is good because it's not not committed. If you do like this in karate, then it's committed. But here is you can uh, alter. Instead of a, a punching, you can block or, or you can parry. Okay. It's, it's dark in here but just to show you what uh, how to train for hip power hip power is good for uh, adding power to your uh, short strikes for example I will, I will give you an example the uh, uh, the Winton punch or the vertical fist punch this is a small candle for starters start with uh, no be humble uh, start with a small candle if you don't train every day, you will find it hard to do this. So, hip power is that uh, split seconds before you punch or strike, you twist the hips like this to the direction to the direction of your target. So, you twist the power travels to your arm and to your fist. So, here is uh, power using only the upward twist of the of the hand, of the fist, okay, look, that is only the, uh, uh, the twisting of the hand, now we will involve the twisting of the hips, okay, it doesn't matter if I'm cheating, the, the the training method is the same. You, you can find it out for yourself. You can really put that candle out. Even, even a bigger candle. Now here is with the hips. Now, that's how we practice the left. Wow, I missed. Thank you.